More than 10,000 firefighters, at least a dozen large wildfires, more than 200,000 acres charred and 5,700 structures destroyed, at least 40 lives lost. This will be the legacy of the ongoing California wildfires that have primarily affected five counties north of San Francisco, including Napa County, known worldwide for its vineyards. Though the cause of the fires is still unknown, they were amplified by gusty, warm, and dry offshore winds that originated in the interior west. These are the infamous Santa Anas in Southern California. They're less well-known cousins, the Diablos in the north. Now to see why this wind direction matters, we'll start at Reno, Nevada, elevation 4,500 feet. Realistic afternoon weather this time of year, 65 degrees, relative humidity 25%. Now say a northeast wind blew from Reno toward the coast. Air warms five and a half degrees for every 1,000 feet it descends. And Napa County is near sea level. So when that, when that air gets to coastal California, its temperature is now 90 with a relative humidity of about 10%. Conditions that certainly can exacerbate a fire threat. And history shows that September and October are the most dangerous months for California wildfires. Here's the five worst on record based on the number of structures destroyed. Four were in October, one was in September. And numbers six and seven on this list were also in either September or October. And in large part, this timing is related to the climate. Now, as an example, here's average monthly rainfall for San Francisco. This is in inches. October is on the left. September is on the right. I show it this way to make it easy to see the distinct wet season, which really starts in November and lasts into about April, followed by a distinct dry season during the warm months from May to September when it hardly rains. And that allows vegetation to dry out, so fire potential peaks by the time you get to late summer. Now let me show you what the last 12 months have been like, the orange bars. Rainfall was way above average in the winter. So grass and brush grew like gangbusters. But that just meant more wildfire fuel to dry out in the summer, which was dry as usual, and also the hottest on record in California. And this time, these fires developed very quickly. Here's the view from space on October 8th. Really nothing apparent. Now here's the next day. By that morning, the community of Santa Rosa, which was at the epicenter of this fire disaster, was in flames. The new GO-16 has a variety of high-resolution imagery to track fires, including color-enhanced infrared, which works day and night. And because fires can flare up so quickly, a special one-minute infrared that's very sensitive to fast-spreading hotspots. These fires led to atrocious air quality in the Bay Area. You could even see the smoke in the air last Friday night as California hosted Washington State in football. Some fans wore masks to protect themselves. Firefighters have made significant progress containing the fires in the last few days, and that should continue to be the case, in large part because of the weather. Stay tuned. We'll have extended forecast next.